Over the past two nights, you've heard from Shirley Skinner, the great grandmother convicted of murder. She admits she shot and killed Stephen Watkins, and she explained why. You've heard her speak of regret and offer apologies to Stephen's family. And you've heard from Stephen's mother, who rejects everything Shirley has offered up. Now, in the final part of six years later, we closely examine the stories that Shirley Skinner and her granddaughter Jennifer, who was also Stephen's estranged wife, tell about the night that Stephen was killed. And we answer the question that everyone's been asking. Why did Shirley wait six years to tell her story? Shirley Skinner says she never spoke to law enforcement or testified at her trial that she killed Stephen Watkins inside her Ashland home because she got bad legal advice from her attorney, prominent Springfield lawyer John Gray Knoll. I've wanted to tell my story for four years. I see that I made a big mistake, a big mistake. I should have got up on the witness stand and I should have told him everything that I just told you. Oh, I regret that to my dying day. I should have got up and told it all. But I didn't. Because why? Because I had a bad lawyer. And I'll always believe that. He shouldn't have told me to take the fifth. If Shirley testified at her trial, this is what she says she would have said. That minutes before Stephen Watkins came to pick up his baby daughter Sydney for a court-ordered, unsupervised visit, the infant became sick and vomited. That Jennifer Watkins, Stephen's estranged wife, and Shirley's granddaughter took the child into the rear of the home to change her. Then Shirley says she would have told the court that without warning, Stephen Watkins flings open the front door. And he looked and he said, where in the hell is Sydney? And I said, well, she got sick. And so don't give me that. He said, I'm taking that kid tonight over her dead body. And he came in and he got to my kitchen table. And I uh, grabbed him by the arm and I said, now, wait a minute, Steve. And he turned around and grabbed me uh, and knocked me down. I jumped up and I got the gun out of the cupboard. And I said, Steve, stop. Steve. I yelled it two times. He didn't stop. And I fired. I thought, sure, I have fire over his head. I, I didn't aim to kill him. Shirley and most of the Skinner family believe she acted in self-defense. Her appellate attorney, Andrea Lyon, who specializes in taking on capital murder cases nationwide, says a self-defense argument should have been the obvious choice. I would have, without any doubt, uh, told her to speak to the police because the truth was the truth. and. Anyone who talks to Shirley Skinner and listens to her talk about that night has no trouble figuring out that what happened and why. In all of Shirley Skinner's state appeals prepared by attorney Lyon, she accused Shirley's trial attorney, Springfield lawyer John Gray Knoll, of quote, incompetence, resulting in an ineffective defense of Shirley Skinner. All those appeals have been denied. But it does seem that Shirley's trial attorney, Noel, considered using a self-defense argument. This letter sent by Noel to Ashland Police Chief Jim Birdsell four days after Shirley killed Stephen Watkins lays out what Shirley says happened the night she killed Watkins and in the letter, Noel uses the word self-defense. However, at trial, a pair of attorneys, led by Noel, attacked the state's evidence with no eyewitnesses to the shooting or forensic evidence linking Shirley Skinner to the gun that killed Stephen Watkins, Noel argued there simply wasn't enough evidence needed to convict Shirley of murder without reasonable doubt. Despite the statements, I shot him, is he dead, and he shouldn't have come back here, that several first responders to the Skinner home after the shooting say Shirley made to them. The state said those were an admission on Shirley's part that she shot Stephen Watkins in the back of the head. Defense attorney Noel tried neutralizing that testimony by arguing those were the ramblings of a hysterical elderly woman in the throes of heart pains. The jury didn't buy it and convicted Shirley of first degree murder three hours after beginning deliberations. Did you ever tell him, I want to tell the story? I did it. No, I didn't. I didn't have enough sense to. When asked to comment on Shirley Skinner's accusations, attorney John Gray Noel declined. He sent us this letter which states that under the Illinois rules of proper conduct, it would be improper for us to comment on these matters.
But these court transcripts show that the judge in Shirley Skinner's murder trial praised Attorney Knoll for putting on, quote, a vigorous defense. And the judge went a step further, theorizing if a self-defense argument would have resulted in a different verdict. Answering his own question, the judge said he didn't know how anyone could get past the fact that Stephen Watkins was unarmed and shot in the back of the head. As we delved more into the details of what Shirley Skinner says happened the night she killed Stephen Watkins and the version of the story Jennifer Watkins tells us, we came across other statements that may be relevant. The policeman in Ashland told him to sit out there and we would bring the baby to him. That's absolutely not true. That's Ashland police officer Larry Cave. The statement in question concerns a call that Officer Cave responded to at the Skinner home in October 2008. According to Officer Cave, Stephen Watkins called police after he came to the Skinner home to pick up baby Sidney for one of his court-ordered unsupervised visits, only to be told by two members of the Skinner family that the baby wasn't there. Officer Cave says the two men were yelling at Stephen, who was standing across the street. Stephen was very calm and cool the whole time. Uh, he, when I met with him before and after, he, he said that, Larry, all I want to do is see my daughter. That's all I'm here for. I'm not wanting to cause any problems with them. All I want to do is see my daughter. I told Stephen that at, after talking to the men and how angry they were towards him, I told him that when he came back that I would have someone with him for his benefit um, in case something should go on um, at that time. Or as a witness? Yes. And then there's the story Shirley's granddaughter, Jennifer Watkins, tells us about the night her estranged husband is killed. Jennifer says just before Stephen arrives to pick up Sydney, the baby vomits. And Jennifer says she goes to a back bedroom to change her. I heard the door slam open and I heard my grandmother's talking back and forth and... Honestly, I didn't know who it was at first. Jennifer says at first she didn't pay much attention to what was going on until she says the talking turned to shouting. And I heard her screaming, stop, stop, and then I heard a pop. And that, that's all I heard. I mean, it was a matter of seconds. But consider what Jennifer told a 911 operator during the second of two calls she placed for help the night of Stephen Watkins' murder. Listen. 911, where's your emergency? Yes, I called 911. My grandmother is having heart problems. My husband came after us, and he's dead on the floor, and no one is here yet. Okay, I've got the ambulance on the way. Can you tell me what happened? Yes, I told you guys before he came in and was mad that we weren't ready. And Sydney had thrown up and we told him that she couldn't go. And so he pushed my grandmother out of the way and then come after my daughter and I. And then he shot. Listen again to what Jennifer tells the 911 dispatcher. He came in and was mad that we weren't ready. And Sydney had thrown up and we told him that she couldn't go. And so he pushed my grandmother out of the way and then come after my daughter and I. And then there's this letter Jennifer wrote to Governor Pat Quinn, asking him to commute Shirley's sentence to time served. Jennifer says she wrote the letter sometime in October 2013, just before Shirley's clemency petition was filed with the Illinois Prisoner Review Board. In it, Jennifer goes into much greater detail about the night Shirley killed Stephen Watkins. Quote, Stephen had come into our home uninvited and was yelling and screaming about Sydney not being ready, that he was going to kill me and take Sydney. I heard Nanny trying to calm him down and telling him to stop when I heard another thud. I later found out that this was my grandmother being violently assaulted and thrown up against a wall. Stephen kept yelling. Then I heard what sounded like a firecracker. In the letter, Jennifer gives much more detail to what she states she heard than what I asked her several times in our interview to recount what happened. And in the letter, she states, this is what she hears taking place. Remember, in the 911 call, Jennifer used the word we in describing who confronted Stephen as he comes in the house and indicates that Stephen came after her and her daughter. Listen again. And Sydney had thrown up and we told him that she couldn't go and so he pushed my grandmother out of the way and then come after my daughter and I. When I contacted Jennifer Watkins and asked that she address her statements in the 911 call in a second on-camera interview, she refused. 
telling me she didn't think it would make her look good. So what are we to make of all of this now? Are we any closer to finding out the details of what really happened inside the Skinner home? We'll let Stephen Watkins' mother, Penny, have the last word. But I, I have to honestly say, I believe it, either anyone in that family was capable of murdering him and would have. I believe that Shirley was the one that they chose to do the deed because she was old and el elderly and, and sickly and nobody would believe little old granny would have done it. Hmm. Well, we know Governor Quinn has not yet made a decision on Shirley's clemency request, so if he denies it, will she be eligible for parole? Well, in fact, Liz, she is eligible for parole. Shirley Skinner will be eligible for parole in the year 2064. Skinner would be 129 years old. So if she is denied clemency, it appears, Liz, that she will die in prison. For any of you who may have missed any parts of our series six years later, you can watch all three parts on our website, WICS.com.